flown the RC uh, planes now for a good few years, uh, but I've never uh, flown a quad. Uh, never really interested me much uh, until uh, a few weeks ago when I suddenly got it in my head that I'd like to fly one. So I put this one together. Uh, it's a Dart uh, 450. Uh, I quite like the look of it. Uh, if you look at the configuration there, it's rigged up for FPV. Uh, if I take the FPV camera off the front, I can put a, uh, a GoPro uh, on the front. The frame is uh, 370 millimeters long and the width is 75 millimeters. The internal dimension for batteries is 55 millimeters and the height, maximum height, is 40 uh, millimeters. Yeah, I've fitted uh, four Multistar Elite motors. Uh, the size is 2216 and they are 920 kV. It came in a little box. Uh, in fact, this is the box that they came in. And I got uh, two that rotate uh, clockwise and two that rotate counterclockwise. The rotation, of course, is referring to uh, these spinners on the top because you can rotate your motor whichever direction you want it to go in simply by changing these uh, wires here. But it's important that uh, your spinners uh, go or, or screw on to your motor in the opposite direction that the motor turns in order for them to lock on. Uh, it stops the, uh, uh, the spinners from uh, coming off. I use the word spinner, but I suppose I mean locking nut or prop bolt or whatever you want to... Uh, to call it but it is important that they screw on in the opposite direction to that which the motor spins. I've fitted uh, four 30 amp afro uh, speed controllers uh, these are uh, uh, linear back uh, system they're not uh, uh, switching. Uh, it was the intention of the manufacturers to fit these and solder them on to the power board but to get them in that would have meant I would have had to cut some wires really down to solder them in uh, the place where the solder points uh, were. And it would have meant that I'd have had to use these speed controllers specifically uh, for this um, quadcopter. I didn't want to do that. Uh, so I've, I've wired them into this harness or loom, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I found that it fitted uh, neatly and nicely and uh, I'm quite happy with uh, the installation and I'm pleased that I didn't solder it uh, to the power board uh, as originally uh, designed. I made some changes to the design because the intention of the designers I guess to separate the bottom part where the motors are attached to the top part that holds all the electrical gear uh, to separate it using this little grommet here or not grommet, this suspension ball uh, quite honestly that suspension ball isn't up to the job and it leaves too flexible a structure uh, when it's used so what I've done is uh, I got some um, balsa wood and cut it to size. There's a little block here and there's also one here and then I fitted one here in place of um, those grommets and I've also um, created a larger gap between here and here because this is where I fitted my speed controllers. I didn't solder them into the underneath um, section I used this bit uh, instead and I went for balsa wood 
because it's low density and it's fibrous and I thought that it would cut down uh, the vibrations uh, as required but also um, when the bolts are put through the nuts and bolts are attached uh, it would make a much stronger structure than as I said before using this where the structure was just way too flexible it just wasn't right in terms of flight controller uh, like I said I'm new to uh, quadcopters uh, I'd heard that the on the web uh, that uh, the KK2 uh, was uh, a good flight control board to have. Uh, so I bought one. I bought the hard case version. This is it here with uh, the programmer, and uh, I put it into the quad quadcopter, and I put it in um, this way up. I presume that was the top because this is the 1.6 version by the way because the labels on the top and I spent hours and hours and hours uh, trying to get it to work properly but it wouldn't calibrate the throttle and it was telling me there was an error uh, on one of the accelerometers accelerometer Z not okay and I just couldn't um, get it uh, to work uh, cut a long story short, a second one um, arrived and I popped it uh, into the aircraft and exactly the same thing. And I thought it's not possible. Uh, I suppose it is to some extent, but the odds didn't seem that great. Uh, that it can be uh, defective like the first one. So I took a look at the situation and I thought I wonder if that is the top and that is the bottom it's natural to think that that label is the top so I popped it into the quadcopter uh, that way up it's attached on these four uh, nuts and bolts that I insulated uh, from the aircraft with these anti-vibration washers uh, that I bought from uh, Maplin for computer use and I attached the battery and it worked perfectly. It was obvious that it didn't accept being uh, programmed uh, when it was upside down. So if you go for one of these, this is a hard case version, uh, just make sure that when you put it in your quadcopter that you put it that way up. I suppose it's obvious really, looking at the problem for the second time, uh, because uh, it says forward on the top and all the lettering for inputs and outputs um, are on the top as well. I just presume that the label would go on the top and it didn't. This is the flight controller bolted into place. This vibration washer here and there's one uh, there as well. Uh, there's four uh, outputs on this side that I've attached although there's eight that you can attach but this being a quadcopter it only needs four so we go one and they are numbered one two three and four number one output provides power uh, to the flight controller and uh, I understand that you uh, need to supply power for the speed controllers through uh, number two. So what I've done is I've stripped back the power leads on uh, number three and uh, number four and it works perfectly in that uh, configuration. It does say in the uh, instruction manual that if you have linear brakes you can keep them attached uh, but it does go on to say that if you're not happy or you're unsure about this arrangement, supplying power to all four, uh, then it suggests you might consider stripping these back. And I thought, well, it's not really black and white then, it's a little bit grey. So uh, I checked these with a, a multimeter 
uh, and I know that power goes to this one and this one from this one and that's the reason why I uh, strip these back and I have test flown uh, this uh, quadcopter and uh, it flies well as it is so that must be right it's quite a confusing issue actually I pondered over that one quite a bit uh, so that's uh, a Beck and that's a Beck and three and four the power lead is stripped out the props that I use I bought these they're 10 by 3.8 with DGI uh, fittings I understand that means there are slots cut inside uh, this little hole here that fits onto the motor shaft and you can probably see on these multi-star motors that they're not completely round they've been cut with a little slot so that when that prop uh, fits on there it won't go right down until I rotate it and it matches up with the cuts in the prop and then it slides on and then I can pop the prop nut, prop nut uh, onto the motor. Because all aircraft need to be balanced to fly properly uh, what I've done is I've taken the diagonal between uh, motor 1 and uh, motor 3 <coughs> and I've marked the position on the top of the airframe and then I've taken the diagonal between motor 2 and motor 4 and marked the diagonal uh, and where those two lines intersect I drilled a little hole and then through that hole I fed uh, fishing line because that position there really is my centre of gravity and I want the centre of gravity to balance between uh, the centre of lift or the centre of uh, thrust so I put that line through there and if I lift this up now and I think we can see that uh, that's quite a balanced airplane because I don't want um, some of the motors uh, doing more work than others uh, to compensate for the fact that the aircraft isn't balanced so I'm happy with that <laughs> 